Greetings enthusiasts. Um, I'm going to attempt to do a little videography myself because my lovely assistant is out pushing snow around. Um, it's the change of seasons. We are well into the weather right now and it is a good time of year to be thinking about a soft top on my car. Um, I could only find one good historical picture of an SC that is a roll bar equipped car with a soft top on it and the soft top finishes up right tight against the roll bar as you would imagine. Um, I will show you a couple of the things that I'm dealing with here and some of the hardware I have laid out. Excuse me while I switch camera angles. So that's the car I have in place on the car, the um, roof bows, and so you need some way of installing those on the car. The original cars had a 5 8 tube or a half inch ID tube um, that was welded right to the frame of the car. Um, you can see that I've come up with a creative solution to put a flange on that to attach it to a fiberglass car. Um, it's got a, a matched plate to it on the other side so that it spreads the load and holds the thing in there. I have the roof bows uh, fitted up to those ferrules. They're about uh, an inch behind the door opening and I have the roof bows so that they're tilted forward um, to give something like the line of the back of the side curtains which this car will ultimately finish up with as well. Um, you can see when I kick back the roof bow you can see that the back of the roof bow is well underneath the hoop of the roll bar and we'll deal with that uh, in a a little further along in this video. Um, the front of the windshield is it has a basically a the head of a nail um, attached to the um, it's actually plug welded into the end of the split header bows and that head of that nail you'll see if you look at your windshields they have a a wider groove in the top center and the head of the nail clicks down into the wider groove and pulls out until the narrower part of the groove where the nail head is effectively contained inside that groove. It can't come out of there. The outside of the split header bow wraps around the edge of the windshield frame and it has latches riveted onto the ends of the split header bow that um, they're effectively over center or suitcase style latches and they hook onto the hooks on the side of the windshield frame. Um, just for interest's sake, let's take a little look on the workbench over here. Actually, it's the junk collecting accumulating table is what it is. Um, so we can see that an original type um, split header bow latch or a soft top latch is a solid casting and you can see it's got a cross hatching cut across the end of it. Um, so that's what the original soft top uh, hardware looked like. Like I said, it's a it's a brass casting. Of course, that um, gets finished and chromed when it's all ready to fit to the car for the final time. And you can see from the outside uh, the shape of it and what it looks like. And the replica hardware looks just like it from the outside. You can see them side by side there. 
Um, so the replica hardware looks just like it from the outside um, with a chrome finish. The only difference is, as you can see, this is a, a pressed part of the latch. So that's um, not the solid brass casting with the cross hatching per the originals. So um, I've got a couple of tools laid out on the bench here. I've got my trusty uh, lift the dot installation punch. Um, you can get by without one of these if you want to do five holes in five separate hits um, you know using a, a lift the dot plate as your pattern but it's much easier just to spend the 60 or 70 bucks or whatever it is on the lift the dot tool so you can get five holes done in one hit um, I'm getting ready to install the first lift the dot snaps on the back edge of the top um, it goes through and I've got my gasket punches or my wad punches here um, there's two layers on the back edge of the roof let's take a little look at that I've got um, the other thing you're going to need to install this on the car obviously is a whole row of lift the dots across the back of the car I, I think there's 16 across the back and then five across the front which we use for the tonneau cover and then obviously for the soft top we don't need the front ones um, we're just relying on the back ones if you've got questions on how they lay out on the car and where they go to make them all work um, we've got all that information and measurements available to uh, anybody buying any of this hardware um, to install a soft top on their car or a tonneau cover on their car. Um, you can see the center of the car does not have a lift the dot so the first two are actually four inches either side of the center line. I have the soft top laid out over the back of the car right now. Um, I have found my stitched center line at the um, back center of the soft top right below the back window as you can see I've measured out four inches either side and I am ready to install my first couple of lift the dot snaps um, you can see right underneath that there is a it's uh, basically a seal there's a uh, an edged seal it's a nice felt wrapped soft seal that um, stops the hardware pounding against the bodywork and it also helps seal the top uh, against the uh, bodywork of the car because they're flapping drafting things anyway so I've laid out my first couple of lift the dot snap locations I'm about to put those in so I'm gonna have to put the camera down um, I am NOT going to put the five holes through the felt part of the seal because that's basically trying to um, put more holes in it than it uh, needs and I'm just going to use my gasket punch or my wad punches to put a single hole through there and then I'll be putting the five hole lift the dot hole pattern through just the vinyl part where it needs it. Uh, like I said I'm going to uh, put my hands, my uh, device down and do a little bit of hammering and punching and installing of lift the dot snaps and I'll be getting ready to put my first few snaps across the back row here. Um, some people are uh, giving instructions on installing a soft top and starting with the corners, the corners behind the doors, and matching them up with the corners of their soft top. Um, I'm going, uh, I'm starting at the center, as I've already mentioned, I believe. And I'm starting at the center because I'm working my way out to a roll bar. And then I'll give you some really exciting juice on um, how I'm going to make this darn thing work around a roll bar on the car. So uh, stand by and I'll hopefully learn, out, learn how to uh, figure out how to splice some videos together as we go through this process of installing the soft top on a roll bar equipped uh, SC style. Cobra.
All right, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging part way through, so I thought I'd better do a quick update as to where I'm at. You can see that I've put the first couple of lift the dot snaps into the uh, back center of the top. I've got them snapped down on the car. The writing goes out towards you, as you can see, which means the narrow spaced tongues on the lift the dot are towards the outside. Uh, and so the top is loosely strung across the car and you can see it runs into the roll bar. Uh, it does, however, reach the front edge of the windshield with just enough to wrap around those split header bows. Uh, speaking of split header bows, let me show you where we're at with those. So I've got the um, over center latch or the suitcase latch, if you like. I've got that riveted up to the end of the split header bow. The other end we've already seen is held in place with the little nail head, slips into the slot of the windshield. Uh, I have to peen over and uh, make, up, make the ends of those rivets a little flatter. I'm using steel rivets with a steel uh, mandrel, uh, obviously just for strength, because there's those three little tiny one-eighth of an inch rivets holding the end of that thing, and the top obviously isn't designed to run at 120 miles an hour down the interstate, but um, we do want to have the thing stay on there as long as we possibly can while we're going to the trouble to install it. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, first couple of lifter dots. Uh, you can see, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, when I set up the, I talked earlier about the roof bow being tipped a little forward to be along the lines of the back edge of the um, side curtains. Um, I've changed my mind. I'm going to tip the, I'm going to bend the bottom corners of these, the bottom pins of the roof bows. I'm going to bend those back because I want the roof bows to line up with the two seams. There's two seams here across the first one's just above the um, back window and the second seam is here and so those are the best places to line up our soft top bows. So I will be tipping the bows back a little further so that the number one bow and that the hinging bow line up pretty good with the seams. I'll be back to you. All right, I'm uh, working away on fitting this top up and you can see that I'm using some masking tape to pull the front edge of the top over the windshield and kind of start positioning it. Uh, I've got the um, split header bows uh, fitted up to the car and the over center latches riveted to the ends of them. Uh, how am I checking that the front edge of the top is centered up? I'm pretty much just taking the curve of the top edge of the vinyl and I'm lining that up equally both sides on the frame of the windshield. Uh, so the front's getting close to position. Uh, let's take a little look around the back. I've got the first four lifter dot snaps in and you can see that this lifter dot post is a nuisance on the tonneau cover which is pretty flat uh, because it's pretty much tucked right up underneath the roll bar where it's quite difficult to get to um, and the roll bar is really the uh, elephant in the room at this point because it is sticking up underneath the soft top and making it very uh, difficult to try and fit the thing up at this point. I am bending the roof bows back a little. You can see it's getting close on the passenger side to lining up the seam with the roof bows. I need to come back a little further. Uh, I'm almost ready at this point, I think, to put some end um, snaps, lift the dot snaps in and then start working my way around those corners. This corner over here is, because of the roll bar, the um, roof bow looks too far forward still. 
uh, I can bend that back a little. But the first time I did this, I spent about two days anguishing over this and looking at it and trying to figure out how to fit that top uh, somewhat reasonably down over the car. And uh, in the end, I got out the scissors and I sliced right up there and made the back window fit around the rear brace of the roll bar and that made it better but still not what it needed and at that point I got the scissors back out again and I slit across the top of the hoop and so that I could at that point get the top to fit reasonably over the uh, roll bar and then it's time to take it to the upholsterers with a few pieces of duct tape or something mocking up what it is you want and have him sew up a pouch for the back and a pouch for the a little bubble for the top to accommodate the top of the roll bar hoop um, so we're getting there i'll be back to you This is my setup for putting the lifter dots in. I've got a nice rugged table for hammering on and that kind of thing. I've got a little um, work table with a blanket over the top of it. So I drape the top over that. I put the edge that I'm putting the lifter dots in over here. And I've got my lifter dot punch and a block of softwood and a big hammer. And then a small hammer to tap over the little tongues or tabs of the lifter dots once I've got it fitted into the top. 